Hi, Mark McNulty here with Action Coach Bluegrass, and welcome to the Business Spotlight Series. Today, I have with us Andrew Kung of the Andrew Kung, president of Andrew Kung Group, and he's going to share with us a little bit about his journey to business ownership, how he leads his team and operates his business today, and in general, just learn more about what it's like to really own and operate your own business. So, Andrew, welcome. Thanks, Mark. Exciting. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it greatly. Yeah, thanks so much. We really, really enjoy the opportunity to have you with us today based on our, our previous conversations. So why don't you go ahead for our listeners, tell us a little bit about your business. Yeah, so we're, we're kind of a small, um, I would say, boutique production and, uh, you know, creative agency. We are, we comprise of uh, six uh, staff members, uh, including myself. And typically what we do is we specialize in commercial and advertising photo and video uh, production. So we have a, a studio, a 7,000 square foot studio here in Louisville, Kentucky, uh, close to downtown. And we handle everything from the, uh, you know, from the inception, the, the concepting of the idea, from the creative uh, development, all the way to production, you know, execution of creating the visual assets of visual media, and then implementing that even, you know, whether it's into ads or web design or, you know, posters, billboards, uh, editorials, you know, any type of print collateral. So we we like to say that we can insert, uh, you know, anywhere along the process, anywhere in the funnel, uh, you know, if somebody finds value to have us take care of a certain component, uh, you know, at any part of the process or from start to finish, you know, from ideation to execution, we're happy to to be a part of that process. Okay, awesome. So, so what's your role other than president in the company? Because it's small business, so I'm guessing you, you do a lot of work too. Yeah, exactly. You know it. Yeah. So basically, I have to wear a lot of hats, and you know, most of our staff too are actually uh, in the same, I guess, boat because we we like to cross train everybody with the size of the you know company that we have. You know, six you know, full-time people. And then with some part-timers and some contractors, it's like everybody has to, you know, play a dual role or even, you know, just wear multiple hats to kind of do multiple things. Um, from a coverage standpoint, we have to have enough overlap. So we need to make sure it's not just one person, you know, that can be, you know, is, that's capable of doing a specific task. So me personally, obviously I handle everything from, um, you know, from a very high level, macro level, you know, bird's eye view, managerial, um, you know, responsibilities, but I also do a lot of the actual shooting. I do a lot of the actual production. I do a lot of the post-production, um, you know, from a sales standpoint, you know, we don't really have a sales team. Uh, we don't really have a sales process. Uh, we don't really do a lot of outreach for sales, but if, if anything, of that, you know, nature occurs, that falls in my, you know, plate, of course. Um, so yeah, I kind of everything from that to accounting, to HR, to physical plant, you know, maintenance, um, to, yeah, cleaning up the studio, cleaning up the office. So it's basically, you know, what you have to do in small business. Right. Okay. So tell me, so who's your ideal client? You know, kind of who do you serve? Yeah. So we like to say that we fit in the space of um, that middle sort of market where we're not a large, you know, production company. We're not a large agency with 20, 30 people, but we're not the solo operator, you know, the two person operator, uh, you know, type of business. So what we do is we like to fill the space where somebody needs an agile group, an agile and capable company that can fill you know these needs where you don't need a large agency um and you have that in place so if you're a client let's just say you're humana for example you have multiple agencies on record right or maybe you know a a, a flagship um agency that's taking care of majority of your advertising and marketing needs but you know you also need sort of something that your internal marketing team can take and you know implement on their own without having to route through the agency so a lot of times we will fill that sort of niche that space where you can come to us for a lot of these needs and some of them are very high production 
uh, too, but we react pretty quick. So we're, we're pretty agile in that space in the sense that, you know, it's not layers of bureaucracy. It's not layers of having to go through multiple, you know, channels of communication. Uh, and we're, we're a much smaller team. So, you know, there's a lot of that personal service too that we provide. So when somebody comes to us, whether it's to take these assets that we produce to use them internally themselves, you know, and quickly too, um, we're good for that. We're also used by agencies themselves that basically operate as yet another, uh, you know, mini agency for the parent agency to get them the assets as well uh, that they can use for the client. So we kind of, you know, fit uh, in that space. And then part of our business model as well is to also serve the uh, very, very small business and the private individuals. So we also, you know, we don't just work for Fortune 500 companies. Uh, we've got uh, basically our business tailored to if it's just a single, you know, business owner or a private individual that just needs, you know, a corporate headshot. Uh, we're set up to, we, we've, and obviously our space you know, having seven to 10,000 square feet in our space is a little overkill for that. But, um, you know, we, we definitely serve as that market as well. Okay. So other than through agencies, which where you get some of your business, how, how do clients find you? Yeah. So we don't do, as I was saying, we don't really have a sales team. Uh, we've never, I think for the last 14 years since, you know, we've been in business, we don't really do any external sales or outreach. A lot of our business, uh, thankfully comes through word of mouth and referral. So when it started with just me as a solo operator, um, you know, I just built a clientele, um, you know, that just grew and grew and grew. And through word of mouth, uh, we're basically where we're at today. And a lot of times, you know, we will use our body of work that we've developed over, you know, all these years um as a marketing tool but we're not believe it or not we're not actually proactively going out and pitching to clients if we've done that we've probably done that less than a handful of times um but i will say from in regards to retention and growing new business within our client base we use social media uh i would like to think pretty effectively so, you know, for example, on our Instagram, we've got about 60,000 um, followers. And so a lot of them are actually our clients. So we don't necessarily book new business or new clients through social media. It happens, you know, rarely. It just happens as it happens every now and again, but it's definitely not um, sort of a lead generator or funnel for us. But what we do is that um, when we show our body of work, on Instagram, for example, our existing clients that do followers that are part of that audience kind of, you know, one, they see us that we're always at the forefront, you know, in their minds because they see what we're doing, even if it's an unrelated industry. Um, and then they kind of get inspired too to maybe implement and extract some of what we're doing for somebody else to go, that's really cool. Maybe I mean, that's that's really not relevant to our business, but maybe we could do something like this for our business. So it helps remind them, you know, that we're around and we're doing very creative work. Uh, a lot of cool stuff is going on. So that sort of helps with the retention and that helps with basically just creating new business, um, you know, within our current client base. Okay, awesome. So. Tell, tell us a little bit about your journey. So did you go to school to study this and yeah. open a business from there or kind of how did, yeah. how did you get So, so that, that's kind of a, uh, an interesting story because really I was not um, trained. If, if, if we sort of, you know, distill it down to what is production, if you go, what is the, the very basic, uh, the core of it, you know, it's photography, videography, right? Did I go to school for that? No, not at all. So um, I actually, my first degree was sociology. My second degree was economics. Then I started my MBA. But, you know, very early on on this journey, uh, one, to backtrack a little bit, you know, when I was growing up, uh, my dad collected cameras. And so I was sort of, he wasn't a professional photographer um, per se, but it was just a hobby. And he was more of a collector than, um, you know, a photographer. But I was around, you know, obviously film cameras, 
um, and just sort of picked up that interest of, of you know, wanting to, to capture stuff and, and, you know, work on composition of what is, you know, a good picture, uh, what's good lighting. And, you know, I was really young. And so it was more of just a, a, a sort of a hobby to, you know, uh, kind of mix in with sports and everything else. And so when I got to college, um, I, I kind of left this, I guess, in high school, didn't really do a lot of photography, but then in college kind of picked it back up and started doing this probably in the early 2000s just for fun. And then eventually, um, you know, with, with I guess, the, uh, the advent of social media, um, a lot of my work started getting uh, somehow just picked up by various people. And then I started getting offers to shoot for a magazine and to shoot for a cover and to shoot for you know, certain products. So it's really interesting because I started doing that um, just as a hobby, uh, you know, wasn't a commercial business, but refined my skills that way and honed my skills and eventually, um, you know, started my own company while, well, in doing production, doing photo and video work, while actually, um, you know, obviously doing a, a day job as well. So it started out as a hobby. I had a day job, um, you know, I worked in an entirely different field uh, and then slowly transitioned to going out on my own uh, with my own business and doing this full time. Okay. So I call that being the accidental entrepreneur that yeah. um, and there's a lot there's a lot out there that that's and that's a great way to start. That's a great story. So what's a memorable hurdle you had to overcome? in that journey to building it, to going from side gig to full-time to, you know, adding team and growing? What, what's right. something right. that sticks out that you really had to work through? Yeah. So for me, in my mind, um, you know, there were a lot of, of these hurdles where we, when I say we really, it was just me at that point, um, where I had to, you know, basically just climb to the next plateau. So when I had a day job, um, it was a pretty decent, decent job. And I loved who I, you know, was working for. Uh, the salary was good. The benefits were great. But, you know, wanting to transition to my own business was scary and obviously a huge risk. Um, and at that point in time, I wasn't, you know, fully comfortable just leaving, um, you know, just going cold turkey and quitting my job and moving to, you know, starting my own business uh, officially. So I kind of transitioned slowly, uh, did maybe, you know, less full-time day job stuff and then kind of funneling my energy and resources into starting a business. And then when I finally made the transition, overcame that, um, you know, that was scary because when I made the full switch, 100% being an entrepreneur or starting my own business, it felt like, you know, there was no work. Um, and I lost, you know, obviously my health benefits, my 403B, I lost, you know, a lot of these other parts, my salary, um, you know, and then, so that was kind of scary for me. Um, but mentally, I think it prepared me to just, you know, kind of push and fight and get over this fear of just going out, you know, and looking for work on your own and building your own, you know, business. Um, so th that started out that way of, of trying to, you know, overcome all of that and then hiring our first, as we grew, as I grew really, and hiring my first employee, um, it was a huge hurdle too, because really I was getting at that point enough work to sustain me now without a full-time job. And I was like, great, this is, this is excellent. I've hit this plateau. I'm comfortable. I've got a full-time job. I can pay for health insurance. You know, I can take care of my family, but we're getting more work now. And it's about time to maybe hire somebody to take on, you know, a little bit of that workload and then grow more. Cause my, you know, my intention, you know, my intent was to obviously not stay at that level, but to keep, you know, getting more work and growing the business, but which, you know, the chicken or the egg, which comes first, do you hire somebody and then look for more work? Do you try and get more work, but then you can't really service your clients with that because you don't have an employee because there's onboarding, there's training, there's, you know, so it's like, which comes first. So when I hired my first uh, employee, that was uh, a, another stressful moment. That was another plateau where you were spending more money than you have 
you know, income coming in because you're really just investing in the future. You're investing in somebody else. You're investing in the company, you know, looking ahead to just try and get uh, more business. So, you know, I look at all of this as like just various challenges and, and hurdles that we've had to overcome because that just keeps sort of that magnitude just keeps growing, you know, as we went from one to two to four to five to six, and we're still growing when we went from a space that was, you know, 800 square feet to 16 to 2,500 to now almost 10,000 square feet, you know, we're always looking ahead to kind of grow um, before the business is there and then slowly bring the business in. So that's, that's kind of like, um, you know, what we've been facing and, and one of the, the, the hardest things, you know, mentally to, you think you get comfortable and then you decide to push the boundaries and you push yourself and then you're really not comfortable anymore. And you're just, you know, back in that grind again. So yeah, that's one of the biggest challenges that we've, we've been facing is just, we're, we're not content. So, you know, we just keep wanting to expand. Yeah, that that's always that's always the good news, but then there's the bad news that comes with that is that it gets it brings new challenges with it. So I mean, you've grown your team over the years. You know, you get you know six full time. You've also used some part time when you're doing shoots, I imagine, and you know bigger things. So how has your kind of management and leadership style needed to change over the years? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. So you know, I think and and you know, it's not something that I came up with, but I've heard this a lot and it resonates with me where you know a lot of uh, a lot of great leaders a lot of people um that i look up to will say you know you don't want to be a boss you want to be a leader so really when we look ahead like kind of what i was talking about is like i want to set the pace i'd like to and i hope i'm i'm slowly learning how to do this better as a leader is i want to be ahead and to set the standard and to have people go, that's where we want to be. So I want to lead the charge. I want to move ahead and basically set the benchmark and inspire, you know, my team to follow me. I think that is more effective overall. And for the size of, you know, the unit that we have for, for the, the group that we have, um, we're a lot more personal. So, you know, it's like everybody is, we definitely have a good, you know, camaraderie, like our, the synergy that we have in our small team is very important. So I want to lead by setting the example and having people follow as opposed to being a boss and being at the back, you know, at the pack, at the back of the line, motivating people by saying, this is, you know, isn't done right. Here's what we need to do, or this is going to happen. You know, I know it's a whole you know, character the stick sort of analogy, but I think I like it more where, you know, you're either ahead as a leader or you're behind as a boss. Both will sort of push, you know, the team forward. It's just how we do it. Are we pushing or are we pulling? So I kind of just think that, you know, I've, I'm starting to, to learn how to be a leader and to inspire more and have people get motivated by being inspired. Okay. Awesome. So um, when you do add team, kind of what's your approach to, you know, attracting and hiring, you know, the right people? Because yeah. on a small team, you know, one wrong hire can really be disruptive. Absolutely. So I think when we look at it from our perspective as the company, from our lens, when we're hiring, um, the first thing, because we are a creative, you know, production company. So we do have to start at the very you know, at the at the most, I guess the the crux of it has to be: are is somebody that we're looking at a creative person? So, I actually skip a lot of the the formalities of resume uh, reviews and all of that. Not that we wouldn't accept somebody's resume. Not that I don't factor certain things on the resume, but really we don't use that as a basis for hire. Um, we look and see how, what is, what have they done before? What's their latest body of work that we can review to see, you know, how creative they are and how skilled they are. But overall, so I start there, but overall, that's technically not even 50% of, you know, the, the hiring, uh, the basis for hiring. So I actually go based on aptitude, personality, character, uh, 
for the for the, um, a majority of of our hiring you know decision making process so if somebody is creative especially you know if they are at the benchmark of what we think is a good fit for the company or above you know beyond that everything else is really character is the kind of person because we're so small like you said we really need to you know be very protective of that synergy that we have as a group we don't you know want to disrupt that um and so we need to make sure somebody is the right fit from you know from basically just the personality to philosophy to growth like where do they want to be you know in three to five years and 10 years we're not asking for people to be lifers here at the company but we don't need somebody that just wants to be here for six months so we basically feel that we can hire i like to think that you know if somebody has to apps to you and there's a great you know fit character and personality wise we can train them for everything else and what we found is that we've added a lot of value to our company to our group um at least you know this is anecdotal information but at least from what we've heard the feedback from a lot of our existing clients is that you guys you know are great to work with like we love like we truly enjoy working with the people so this company is, you know, obviously it's the, the work that we're producing, but we're really people driven. So if I hire the wrong person, that would be detrimental to us because really, you know, th th we work so closely with the client. If they don't enjoy working with us, if they can't stand our personalities, if we're, you know, somebody that they want to avoid, then obviously is the dis why would they hire us? You know, it's a disservice to the clients, disservice to our company. So yeah, we, we basically just, you know, just answer your question succinctly. We look and see if they are at a certain benchmark from a creative standpoint. If they don't have the technical skills, if they don't have the other skill sets that we're looking for, we will train them if they are the right fit from a personality, aptitude, and character standpoint. Okay, awesome. Love that. So, um, listeners, this is uh, you know Andrew's shared a lot of tips, um, his journey, the 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 accidental entrepreneur journey and um, the ups and downs with that. And so uh, make sure you listen to this a couple times. Now, Andrew, I've just got a couple final sure. quick, short answers, kind of, you know, first uh, thought off the top of your head is usually the best for these. Um, so what's been your key to success? I think just always, you know, when I, from the micro level, waking up in the morning to wrapping up the day, delivering projects to clients is I think the, the one thing that I'd like to think I, you know, is, is at the forefront of my mind is, are we bringing value? Are we bringing value to each other as a team? Are we bringing value to the client? And I always say, if we don't, the minute we're not bringing value, we have to sit down and assess and pause everything and go, why are we doing this? So the last thing I want to do is have a client spend money, you know, with us and we we're really not helping them sell more or, you know, you know, get more publicity or to look better. There is zero benefit to that. So really at the forefront of my mind is I'm always assessing every step of the way, you know, as a team, are we growing? Are we bringing value to the clients? Okay. Awesome. Well, that answer. So what's one piece of advice you would give to other business owners? I would say um, diversify and balance. Um, and that is everything from personal life to business. And I know that's sort of a, a canned answer. And people have told me that as I was, you know, starting my own business, um, there was always that debate of specialize and be the best of the best in one thing, or kind of be, you know, jack of all trades, and kind of, you know, do a lot of things. I, I, I think, inherently, I like to do a lot of different things, um, and be pretty decent at them all instead of just being a master at one. But in our business with, you know, the way, uh, you know, things go with the economy, it's up and down. I think what we have found is that in order to survive and thrive, uh, you you definitely have to diversify. So we we basically do production for a lot of different industries. We have a lot of different clients all the way from the nonprofit sector to Fortune 500 companies to private, you know, individuals to um to survive to thrive um you also need balance professionally uh personally as well and i'm i'm slowly trying to build that into my own you know sort of mo of life of you know not just putting in 80 hours a week 
uh, at, you know, at work because I find I'm actually more productive if I balance, you know, just some other hobbies, some, some of my personal, you know, to right. take some of that back. So, yep. Awesome. So before I ask my very last question, so if people want to learn more about you and your company, you know, how do they, how do they find you? Where, where, where should they look on Instagram? You know, where, where are all the places yeah. other than just your website that they can find you? Right. G great question. I think because we are so visual, uh, we're, we're basically visual media driven. Uh, what we do is, you know, photography and video related. The best is, is technically Instagram um, because that's the easiest way to kind of see in a nutshell, everything that we're doing that we're allowed to share. Obviously that's not, you know, uh, covered under an NDA, but um, yeah, Instagram at Andrew Kung photo. So Instagram.com slash Andrew Kung K U N G photo is the best. I think you'll, you'll find it very exciting to kind of see, you know, all the different clients that we have and the different styles of, you know, cause we're really doing what is best for the client. So you'll see that diversity again in our body of work. Uh, and then we're also on Facebook as well. So. Okay. So Instagram. All right. Great. So Andrew Kung photo for anybody who didn't write that down. Um, all right, so last question for today. So what's most inspiring to you right now? Yeah, I think for me, it's like just looking at, um, you know, anyone, and not just the current generation, you know, the younger generation, but really anyone that is not afraid to pivot and to make a career change. And I see that, you know, all the way from young people uh, to older people, like people who've been in their careers for 20, 30 years, and they're not afraid to make that change. And I think that's really inspiring. I'm trying to actually get that brave, not that I'm looking to make a career change. Now, I know I did that. Um, and it felt really scary then, but, you know, I kind of overcame that, but I'm looking uh, at, at these people that have been, you know, heart surgeons for, you know, 20, 30 years, they're successful and they're, and then they get inspired to quit and just become an artist. And that that is so inspiring to me to, to just see that somebody is so brave to say, I'm not going to be a heart surgeon anymore. I'm going to paint some watercolor art. And yes, my, you know, level, my standard of living, my income is going to drastically change, but that's okay. You know, and I've seen that across the board. I think COVID kind of, you know, in, inspired or instigated a lot of that. Um, but that trend seems to have, you know, perpetuated itself a lot more now. And yeah, I find that extremely inspiring. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. I, I, I really like that. So this has been Andrew Kung, president of Andrew Kung Group. He's shared a ton with us today. Um, so make sure you bookmark and uh, the, the, this link and this YouTube channel so that you can get notifications when future interviews drop. And make sure to watch us a couple of times to pick out all the different nuggets Andrew shared with us today. Andrew, thank you so much for your time you. today. Really appreciate it. Yeah, great talking with you. So I'm Coach Mark with uh, Action Coach Bluegrass. And... Um, Watch this a couple times, subscribe, and we'll see you again on the next interview. Thanks, everyone. Take care.